It was written in the stars, earth, wind, and fire. And there was only one genius that could bring this dream to fruition. Join me on this episode of Musical Tea to find out what's behind the man, the originator, the leader, Maurice White. A child is born with a heart of gold. Maurice White was born on December 16, 1941 in Memphis, Tennessee. His mother, Edna Parker, was just 17 years old at the time of his birth. His father, John White, was a club owner and a gangster from Mississippi. He was barely in Maurice's life, but he describes his father as being very mean and abusive. He died when Maurice was just five years old. Mother dear, which is what Maurice would refer to his birth mother as, decided when she was 21 years old that she no longer wanted to be in Memphis, Tennessee. It was hard for her to find any work that was outside of having to clean for white families. And that was something that she just was against. Back then, during those times, there were not a lot of opportunities for black women. Black men were able to get jobs at the plant, but women were not allowed. So when Maurice was just at the tender age of four years old, Edna decided to leave him with a family friend who went by the name of Elvira Robinson. This is who Maurice would go on to call Mama until the end of her days. Maurice described Mama as a sweet, tender, godly, and strong woman who instilled in him spirituality, believing in yourself, positive affirmations, and also the love of music. She always said positive things to him and let him know that he was going to change the world. The world would know his name. Though it's been written that Miss Robinson was Maurice's grandmother, she actually was no relation to him. It was not uncommon for grandmothers to raise grandchildren back in those days. So that is the reasoning they went with in order to keep the real reason why he was away from his mother private. Maurice the Half-Breed Maurice was an intensely private and introverted child who would get bullied because of his light complected tone. To black people, he was called half-breed. To white people, he was still called a nigger. He felt like he couldn't fit in. In order to escape the racially segregated atmosphere, he would escape into spirituality and music. Once Maurice reached middle school and started playing the drums, from then on, the bullying ceased as he became popular for his abilities. Mother Dear and Maurice reunite. It would be at Maurice White's high school graduation where he would peer into the front row and see a very familiar face. It was Mother Dear. She had returned and she wanted Maurice to come back to Chicago with her. He didn't really know how to feel. He had only seen her once over the years that she had been gone. By this time, Mother Dear had had more children and also married a wonderful man who went by the name of Dr. Verdine Adams Sr. Dr. Verdine Adams Sr. was a World War II vet, a podiatrist, and an occasional saxophone player. He was well read, he spoke five languages, and was looked at as a prince in his community. Maurice would come to call him dad as he was a great man to him. Mother dear, and Dr. Verdine Adams Sr. would go on to have eight additional children. The woman who had taken care of Maurice, Ms. Robinson, was understandably devastated, but she knew that Maurice had to go as there were no opportunities for him in Tennessee. Sadly, she died of cancer six months after he left. Chess Records and the Ramsey Trio. In the mid-1960s, Maurice White had gotten hired at the legendary Chess Records, which was founded by two brothers, Leonard and Phil Chess. He was a session drummer for various artists, such as Etta James, Muddy Waters, and The Impressions, just to name a few. 
While working at Chess Records, he met jazz pianist Ramsey Lewis and soon became a part of the Ramsey Lewis Trio. He worked on nine albums with Ramsey Lewis in which one of the songs ended up winning a Grammy. While with Lewis, he learned not only about music, but he learned about great stage presentation. And he also ended up learning about an African piano called the Kalimba, which would come in handy when he formed his own dream band. It was written in the stars. Maurice loved all things metaphysical. He also studied astrology. He looked at it as a science. In the late 1960s, he sought out the counsel of a famous black astrologer from Chicago named James Black. People would travel from all over the world to see him. As Mr. Black did Maurice's birth chart, he recognized that Maurice had no water present, only fire, air, and earth elements. He proceeded to explain to him that that usually meant a pronounced lack of emotion. He also explained that birth charts are done in order to make one aware of their natural tendencies. What they choose to do with the information will determine the course of their life. Maurice understood that this was a definite truth because he was always able to cut off people emotionally very quickly, stemming from issues in his childhood. With this information, he decided to go back on tour. But as he was on tour, he started to have a series of dreams. He dreamed of a band with nine people with different objects such as turbans and outfits. A universal band that would bring about self-love, dignity, a different kind of black masculinity. He became obsessed over it and over the couple of months, he started to draw out what he wanted this band to be. It would be a band that he would be the leader of. Soon after, he left the Ramsey Lewis Trio. The original Earth, Wind, and Fire. After leaving the Ramsey Trio, Maurice started on a mission to find other musicians to aid him in turning his vision into reality. He made the move to California at age 28. As he was getting the band together, he called his brother Verdine White, who was 19 years old and had just gotten a full musical scholarship to come out to California and star Earth, Wind & Fire with him. Verdine, who Maurice referred to as the ultimate Leo, agreed to join him on this journey. The original members were Don Whitehead, Wade Flemings, Geeksoft Ben Israel, Michael Beal, Sherry Scott, who was the first female singer of Earth, Wind & Fire, Alexander Thomas, and Chester Washington. This was 1970. After this first lineup, there would be several change-ups in the members due to some not understanding the concept of Earth, Wind & Fire and issues with Maurice's band leadership. In 1972, all the original members except Verdine White and Sherry Scott quit the group. Maurice had to regroup. He then got Philip Bailey, who had a wonderful falsetto voice, to join the group. Then entered Ralph Johnson, who also joined in 1972, and then, and then Maurice's little brother, Fred White, who had started playing the drums when he was 15 years old and had already had some fame. He asked him to come and join too, and that was in 1974. The last female singer that would ever head Earth, Wind & Fire came in 1972, and her name was Jessica Cleves. She had a beautiful voice, but Maurice eventually put her out of the group because of her drug use, which was a huge no-no. She is the beautiful high note voice that you hear at the end of Keep Your Head to the Sky. Music is my mistress, and she plays second fiddle to no one. Nothing or no one was more important than Earth, Wind & Fire to Maurice White. It was his baby. He put up the money, he owned the name, he owned the vision. His goal was not only to put out music, but it was to put out a lifestyle, a way of thinking. He introduced everyone to metaphysics. He used astrology in order to try to understand people's personalities better. Being a leader can be very difficult 
especially if you're fixed on a certain vision. Though he was quiet, he did not play when it came to earth, wind, and fire, which could sometimes make it to where he came off as being cold. After a lot of the performances, Maurice would not go out to the after parties. He would simply go to his room to meditate and to manifest. He required a lot of a long time. Love and Fatherhood Maurice White was a very self-aware individual. He valued his peace and solitude and most of all being free. He never thought the idea of waking up to the same woman day and night was cool. Plus, unlike a lot of other artists in the business, he knew that he would be away on the road, a lot away from home, making it impossible for him to have a traditional relationship. Maurice will be gone at least 200 days out the year, not including him producing and writing for various artists, which is why he never got married. But he had a few significant relationships, which resulted in him having three children. The first woman that Maurice would refer to as a friend he had known since the Ramsey Trio days, her name was Evelyn, and they would end up having a daughter together. Maurice's firstborn, Hamia Mimi White. After she was born, Maurice bought Evelyn a house to raise Hamia in, but he was barely there for her childhood because he was always on the road. He expressed regret for that, for the toll that it took on her and their relationship was strained because of it. The second woman that would end up being very significant in Maurice's life was named Marilyn Ordoviche. Maurice had met her when he first moved to California in 1970. Initially, their relationship was wonderful. They were on the same vibe as far as clean eating and lifestyle, but eventually they started to have issues on and off as Marilyn wanted to know what would be the status of their relationship. She wanted marriage and Maurice was not for it. So eventually they ended up breaking up in 1977, but she was never far away. They remained friends until the end of his life. They ended up giving birth to their first son, which was Cabron White. Cabron White now is in charge of Maurice's estate and he still travels with Earth, Wind and Fire Maurice was also not very much present in the early parts of his life because of him traveling. The last woman was named Eileen Warren. She was a clothing designer that Maurice had met back in 1972. Maurice referred to her as the love of his life and his soulmate. And the reason why he felt that way about Eileen is because out of all the women that Maurice dated, she was the only one to never question where they stood. She also had a demanding career of her own, so she understood what it was like to be obsessed and just married to your career. She accepted him fully as he was. As a result, they ended up having a child who was his last son, Eden White. Though Maurice made sure that all three of his children and the mothers of his children were financially taken care of, he did express regret about not being there as he should have. He realized that it took more than financially providing to be a father. He spent the rest of his days making it up. Maurice and Parkinson's disease. In 1990, Maurice started to notice symptoms of him shaking uncontrollably. And in 1991, it got worse, which made him go see a neurologist and he was then diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. He was told that if he kept a positive mind, that everything would be fine. He had a slow progression of it. He ended up keeping this secret to himself for nine years, but eventually he had to end up telling everyone because it got harder and harder for him to tour, to be able to keep up with the demands of touring. He was breaking glasses. He just couldn't do it anymore. And eventually he had to give up earth, wind and fire as far as being a leader. It hurt him tremendously because it was his baby, but he had to adjust to what his life had become. Maurice, last album. In 2009, Maurice called up one of his old friends, Herb Powell, whom he had known over 20 years, 
and asked him to write his memoir. Over the next five years, Maurice would sit down and give out his most deepest, darkest secrets, which was something that was very rare for Maurice to do, as he was a very, very private person. The book was finished in 2014. Maurice was happy about the results, and right before it was published, in March of 2016, Maurice died February the 4th, 2016 in his sleep due to Parkinson's disease. He looked at this book as his very last album. Earth, Wind and Fire Legacy Continues. In 1974, Earth, Wind and Fire was scored their first top 40 hit with Mighty Mighty, and then they went number one with Shining Star in 1975. They would go on to have 16 top 40 singles, win six Grammys, and sell an estimated total of 90 million albums. Maurice won an individual Grammy for Got to Get You Into My Life in 1979. The group was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2000. Maurice was inducted into the Songwriter Hall of Fame in 2010. Today, the legacy continues with Ralph Johnson, Verdine White, and Philip Bailey. Maurice lives on in memory as a visionary, a lover of life, and a deliverer of peace and inner strength. He will be missed. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Musical Tea, Maurice White Edition. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel.